welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for second graders. <laughs> but as always, everyone is welcome to learn with us. Okay, well, that was about the weirdest intro I've ever done. It is very hot under here. If you can't tell, this is outfit is a pug. Um, and it's just a little bit hard um, to teach with that thing down. So we'll do it as much as I can. But you're probably wondering why I'm wearing this. And honestly, I kind of am too because it's not easy to see through this thing. I didn't really think that part through, but that's okay. But this week in second grade reading, we are learning all about drama. And we have spent two days, oh, Molly thinks it looks weird, hold on. Molly, come here, come here, come say hi. Come here, come here. Okay, well, whenever you're ready, I know you're a little freaked out by this. Um, we have spent two days going over what drama is and oh, come here. Oh, yeah. Does this freak you out? Look, two dogs. <laughs> Man, if only we had a script right now with two dogs, we could totally pull this off. Right, Molly? No? Yes? No? Say hi to the people. The kids want to... Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. Too hot anyways. Um, we have <laughs> spent about two days um, talking about the different types of elements that you might find in a book and um, how... Or I'm sorry the different types of elements that you might find in a play or a drama, and how we can also find some of those elements in the picture books that we read. And so that's been kind of fun looking at. So we're gonna continue to do that same thing today, rereading a picture book we've already read or reading one that maybe we haven't read yet and looking at how there are already elements of drama and how, if there's not a lot of elements of drama, how we could add those in um, and talk about, wow, if we were to act this book out, what would that look like, okay? All right, so, whew, I'm very hot in this pug suit. It is toasty. So, right now, let's take a little bit of time and get ourselves ready to learn, all right? I'm going to get myself into the green zone. Um, I feel like a little bit in the yellow zone because I'm hot and I'm excited. These lessons are fun to teach because it just feels like, I mean, look at me, I'm dressed up in a pug costume. It's a little fun and silly. So, um, how was your day today? I hope your day was good. I had a wonderful day. Hung out with my dog, Molly. Um, we're getting back into our routine of walking and exercising and she loves it. Um, she played with um, another dog that's a golden retriever, uh, Penny, and they play 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 all day long. So she's a little tired right now. That's why she didn't really want to look at the camera and she needs a bath really bad. And I'm pretty sure I told you last week that she needs a bath too. So we really need to get on that. Um, so I'm gonna do some deep breaths. I'm feeling a little more calmed down because whoo it was hot in there. I think I'm just gonna have to like tuck this in or something because wear it right here, I think. Yeah, just like this. Okay, you get the idea, right? It's a pub because it was way too hot with that thing over my head. Um, let's go ahead and do some deep breaths. Are you ready? If you have some water, go ahead and grab it. Here we go. Deep breath in through your nose. Push it out. Getting our brains and our bodies ready to learn.
All right, so I will be able to identify the elements of drama, add elements of drama to a picture book to make it similar to a play. Whoops. Okay, so these are the elements of drama. We have characters, which we know is already like a picture book. We have characters in our books. Okay, so drama has characters as well, just like TVs and movies do. Then we have acts. Acts can be a little confusing. Acts are, um, so whenever you um, are reading a play, it will tell you what act you're in, like act one, act two, act three, act four. There can be lots of acts, so there can be very few acts. Um, acts are, you can have multiple scenes within an act, um, but an act helps the audience know that we're shifting from like this setting with these characters and now we're shifting to this setting with these characters. So acts usually have a change in characters and setting, okay? Okay, um, then we have setting. The setting tells you who, um, what, where, when, why. The setting gives you a little bit of background on what's happening, as well as the narrator is usually telling you what the setting is, and the narrator is telling the parts of a story that aren't always told. Meaning the narrator is kind of giving you background knowledge on what's happening, why it's happening, how the characters are feeling. So a narrator is really important to a story. When you read books, sometimes they have narrators in them and they're not characters in the book, okay? When you watch TVs or movies, sometimes there's a narrator, someone who's explaining the story, um, but sometimes there's not. But in plays, there's always, um, well, I shouldn't say always, most of the time there is a narrator. All right, then we have a costume and props. No idea what the costume is, just kidding. Costume is obviously what the act or actresses, actress is wearing um, to help represent what is happening in the play. Um, the props are the items that are you're using, the objects, the things that are help acting out the play as well. And then dialogue is the back and forth conversation between the characters. That's what we're gonna talk a lot about in the books that we're looking at today, um, is the dialogue. And if um, you've read a play before, you know that the narrator isn't always involved in the dialogue between the two characters, but the narrator could be explaining something that the characters are doing while they're talking, okay? Okay. All right, so I have some books here today, and we are going to read through one of them. And it is The Three Armadillas Tough. The Three Armadillas Tough. And an armadillo, I'm also pulling up Google Translate again, just in case I come across any words that I don't know, um, cause that happens. So, let me make sure I said that right. Because it looks like armadillas. Let's see. Hang on. This is real life. This is what you do. Mm, nope, that's not what I want. Come on. All right, here we go. Finding it, finding it. All right, that was silly. I should have done that from the beginning. Duh. I'm the babies. Okay. There we go. The three armadilly, armadillies? Armadillies. Armadillies. It's not armadillas. 
Armadillies. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. The three armadillies tough. Once there were three armadillo, that's what I said. Sisters, this is the plural. Armadillies is the plural version of armadillo. Armadillo sisters by the name of Tuff. The smallest was Lily, a humdinger of a gal who really knew how to shake her shell on the dance floor. The middle sister was Jilly, the fashion queen of the family. The biggest sister was Dilly, who was crazy about chowing down. My, my, how these three armadillies loved to have a good time. Three fun-loving armadillo sisters are eager to go to the new dance hall on the other side of a busy highway. To avoid being turned into roadkill, they decide to scurry through the drain pipe that runs under the road. But something mighty scary is waiting inside. Inside. Will fast talk and sisterhood get the three armadillies tough safely past a spiny legged coyote with a big appetite for armadillo chili? Yikes. All right, this book is being read with permission from Peachtree Publishing. Let's get started and hopefully we don't run out of time. Okay, the three armadillies. Armadillies. Armadillies, tough. Once there were three armadillo sisters by the name of Tuff. The smallest was Willie, Lily, a humdinger of a gal who really knew how to shake her shell on the dance floor. The middle sister was Jilly, the fashion queen of the family. The biggest sister was Dilly, who was crazy about chowing down. My, my, how those three armadillies loved to have a good time. In fact, it was their quest for fun and adventure that got them in trouble one summer evening. Oh, my brain is already thinking how this could be like a play. Right? The narrator could have read that whole scene, right? Because they haven't really talked to each other yet. Here we go. Let's go to the dance hall on the other side of the highway, suggested Lily. I have a hankering to learn some new steps and kick up my claws. But if we run across the highway, I might chip my nails, complained Jilly, inspecting a freshly painted claw. Or get squashed by an 18-wheeler, Dilly added. Oh, don't be such a soft-shelled ninny, scolded Lily scuffed. We can cut through the big drain pipe that runs under the road. The sisters all agreed that this was a fine idea, so they waddled off toward the highway. Okay, so a costume, think about what the costumes and the props, what might those look like? If we change some of this into a play or we were acting it out, what might the costume or the props look like? What do you guys think? Yeah, so you're gonna need like a hard shell kind of costume. One of the armadillos will be a little bit bigger, right? One of them um, is going to be like, Maybe with the hat, I think that's um, Lily. She wants to dance and kick up her new claws. And then um, like a fashionable armadillo, armadillo would be Jilly, right? So you could have um, three different costumes of the armadillies and they could each show up, show up in a different way, right? So the narrator, like we said, would read through all this part or would say this and explain. It's kind of setting the scene, right? It's the setting. And then they would just go back and forth, which is pretty much what they did with this dialogue. So let's read it if, it, if we didn't have who was talking in the story, okay? So there's dialogue and it says, suggested Lily or said Jilly or added dilly okay so let's read it without that and that would be like reading it a, a play let's go to that new dance hall on the other side of the highway i have a hankering to learn some new steps and kick up my claws that's lily that's lily talking but if we run across the highway i might chip my nails or get squashed by a 18 wheeler Oh, don't be such soft-shelled ninnies. We can cut through the big drain pipe that runs under the road. And then the narrator would say this part. 
The three sisters agreed that was a fine idea, so they waddled off toward the highway. All right, let's keep going. By and by, the sisters arrived at the culvert, at the culvert and, appear, and peered into the long, dark pipe. I'll go first, Lily volunteered bravely. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Lily sashayed her way along. We're going to keep reading when we come back. Who's that scritch scratching through my tunnel? Growled a voice. It's just me, Lily Armadilly Tuff, the smallest sister replied. Come closer, snarled the voice. As Lily stepped forward, she saw a spiny, legged coyote with glowing eyes glaring at her hungrily all right so we have a new character introduced the coyote right oh lily looks terrified of the coyote all right so we could act out this scene by they could just be walking up and the narrator would say the sisters arrived at the pipe and appeared into the long dark pipe lily went first or the narrator wouldn't even have to say that. They could just stare and then Lily could say, I'll go first and just start going as the other two watch. Then she comes across the coyote in the pipe. So that would be introducing a new character. And back and forth would be this without the um, said and replied. So you'd have to visualize who is talking. Who's that scritch scratching through my tunnel? It's just me, Lily Armadilly Tough. Come closer. All right, let's keep going. Whee! exclaimed Lily, jumping back. She tried to ignore the coyote's pointy fangs. From the looks of those scrawny legs, I'd say you need a workout. What I need, panted the coyote, is a nice hot bowl of armadilly chili. Lily thought fast. My bigger sister is right behind me. She'd make a much better chili than I would, she suggested. The scraggly coyote scratched behind in the ear for a moment. Go on then, she barked finally. Get Lily scurried away before the coyote could change her mind. All right, we're going to keep reading. Soon after, the second sister waddled into the tunnel. She was very careful not to let the cobwebs catch her in her jewelry. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Jilly jangled her way along. Who's that scritch scratching through my tunnel? Growled the coyote. It's just me, Jilly Armadilly Tuff. The middle sister replied, come closer, the coyote demanded. As Jilly stepped forward, she saw drool dripping off the coyote's long tongue and onto the critter's grungy coat. Yikes, yipped Jilly. That slobbery mouth of yours sure needs sprucing up. And from the looks of your mangly old fur, I'd say you need a good soak in the tub. What I need, snapped the coyote, looking Jilly up and down, is a nice hot bowl of armadillo chili and some fancy armadillo skin boots. Whoa, hang on, flea bag, replied Jilly, holding up a claw. In, case, in that case, You'll be wanting my big, and I do mean big, sister Dilly. She's on her way right here now. Dilly did not only f Dilly will not only fill you up, but she'd make a fine pair of boots. But she might even fetch you a handbag too. A handbag? The scraggly coyote's beady eyes grew larger, and she stopped drooling for a moment. Then she licked her chops and barked. Go on, then get. Jilly skittered out of that tunnel, lickety split. A few minutes later, the third sister stepped into the tunnel. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Dilly lumbered her way along. Who's that scritch scratching through my tunnel? Howled the coyote. It's just me, Dilly Armadilly Tuck, 
the biggest sister replied. I'm trying to catch up with my sisters. Ooh, look at that snake. I wonder why there's a snake. Well, your sisters aren't here, snarled the coyote, but they promised you would make me a fine meal, some boots and a handbag. Who, me? Dilly said. Why, that's downright ridiculous. I'm no good at cooking, stew, or sewing, but I know where we can find ourselves something good to eat and have some fun. With a growl, the coyote stepped out of the shadows, and Dilly got a good long look at her. Mercy, Dilly yelped. I mean, why, you poor thing. How long has it been since you've had a girl's night out? A what? asked the coyote, frowning. You know, a night on the town, Dilly explained, with friends. The coyote sniffed. I've always been a loner, she said sadly. I've never had any friends. Well, bless your little old heart, Dilly cried. We can fix that. Come on, let's go find my sisters. I cannot believe this is happening. When Lily and Jilly heard the coyote's sad story, the three sisters treated the pitiful critter, whose name, by the way, was Tallulah, to a fluff and puff makeover and a fine meal at the trash cans behind the chomp and stomp. Before long, Tallulah was looking fine in her new hair bow, fake leather boots, and a matching handbag. Then it was time to hit the dance floor, where Lily taught them how to do the armadilly shuffle. So, if you ever hear critters digging through garbage cans or a coyote howling, don't fret. It's just Tallulah and the armadilly tough sisters having a rip-roaring good time. All right, that was amazing. I'm gonna go back and let's try and reread it. Just what like the narrators and the characters would say to each other. This thing keeps falling. Okay, hopefully we don't run out of time. Okay, the narrator, here we go. Once there were three armadillo sisters by the name of Tuff. The smallest was Lily, a humdinger of a gal who really knew how to shake her shell on the dance floor. The middle sister was Jilly, the fashion queen of the family. The biggest sister was Dilly, who was crazy about chowing down. My, my, how those three armadillies loved to have a good time. In fact, it was their quest for fun and adventure that got them in trouble one summer evening. Let's go to that new dance hall on the other side of the highway. I have a hankering to learn some new steps and kick up my claws. But if we run across the highway, I might chip my nails or get squashed by an 18-wheeler. Oh, don't be such soft-shelled ninnies. We can cut through the big drain pipe that runs under the road. The sisters all agreed this was a fine idea, so they waddled off toward the highway. Okay, remember, I'm reading it just like I would a play. By and by, the sisters arrived at the culvert and appeared into the long, dark pipe. I'll go first. Who's that scritch scratching through my tunnel? It's just me, Lily Armadilly Tough. Come closer. Woo-wee! From the looks of those scrawny legs, I'd say you need a workout. What I need is a nice hot bowl of Armadilly Chili. My bigger sister is right behind me. She'd make a much better chili than I would. Go on, get then. Lily quickly ran away before the coyote could change her mind. Then Jilly went into the tunnel. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Who's that scritch scratching through my tunnel? It's just me, Jilly Armadilly Tough. Come closer. Yikes! That slobbery mouth of yours sure needs sprucing up, and from the looks of your mangly old fur, I'd say you need a good soak in the tub. What I need 
is a nice hot bowl of armadillo chili and some fancy armadillo skin boots. Whoa, hold on, flea bag. In that case, you'd be wanting my big, and I do mean big, sister Dilly. She's on her way here right now. Dilly will not only fill you up and make you a fine pair of boots, but she might even fetch you a handbag too. A handbag? Then go on, get. Dilly skittered out of that tunnel, lickety split. Dilly entered the tunnel, scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Who's that scritch scratching through my tunnel? It's just me, Dilla, Dilly Armadilly Tough. I'm trying to catch up with my sisters. Well, your sisters aren't here, but they promised you would make me a fine meal, some boots, and a handbag. Who, me? That's, that's downright ridiculous. I'm not good at cooking or sewing, but I know where we can find ourselves something good to eat and have some fun. Mercy! Oh, the narrator would say, the coyote comes out of the shadows. Mercy! I mean, why you poor thing? How long has it been since you had a girl's night out? A what? You know, a night on the town with friends. I've always been a loner. I've never had any friends. Well, bless your little old heart. We can fix that. Come on, let's go find my sisters. Okay, this is the narrator. When Lily and Jilly heard the coyote's sad story, the three sisters treated the pitiful critter, whose name, by the way, was Tallulah, to a fluff and puff makeover and a fine meal at the trash can behind the chomp and stomp. All right, we're gonna stop there for today. I am really enjoying turning um, these books like into plays or reading them like plays. So I hope you are too, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.